Hello. I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about using console for doing networking infrastructure automation. You know, when we often talk about console, I think the most common use case people think about is sort of service discovery, right? And I think that's the kind of core of what console originally was meant to solve. So if we think about, you know, console, one way to think about it, you know, when we think about service discovery is as a common registry of all the different applications we have running, right? So if we have different applications, you know, A, B, C, and D, for example, all of them register implicitly with console, and so we have this sort of catalog of what are all the applications and where are they running, right? So this initial use case is what we call sort of service discovery, uh, or you can think about it as sort of service registry, right, where you have this bird's eye catalog of where everything is running. So what this enables us to do is as these services want to talk to one another, they can query console and use it as sort of a dynamic dictionary or directory of all the different services, right? One way to think about it is sort of the dynamic linker of the network. Instead of A hard coding the IP address of B, it's querying console and console saying, great, here's the IP to go talk to, or here's the, you know, here's the way to get to C, right? So that's sort of layer one. Now, I think the reality is in most networks, it's not so simple as independent applications just on a flat network talking to one another. In practice, you have different middleware that exists between them. For example, if A wants to go talk to a database, that database might have, you know, for example, a firewall that sits behind it. Or we might have traffic that needs to come in from the public internet, right? And we have an API gateway as an example. And that API gateway is sending traffic to services C and D, right? So the reality is we're gonna have a bunch of different middleware that exists, right? It might be firewalls, might be API gateways, there might be load balancers, for example, right? So service B might be very popular, right? And lots of services are reaching it. So we have a load balancer that's fronting traffic coming in, right? So there's lots of these different middleware appliances that exist within the network. You know, I think a common challenge that we end up then seeing is oftentimes that they sit, the changes to these services sit behind a ticketing mechanism. So if I'm deploying a new instance of A and that thing needs to be able to reach the database, oftentimes I have to file a ticket and wait for someone to manually update this firewall rule so that I can get access to the database. Or similarly, if I launch a new instance of B, you have to file a ticket and someone updates the load balancer or you know, if we're scaling system D up, someone has to manually update the API gateway to add it into configuration. So there's a few areas where console can help us to do this sort of infrastructure automation. As we talk about more modern, sophisticated solutions, modern API gateways, modern load balancers, modern firewalls, oftentimes now they're directly console aware. So if we're, for example, using an F5 big IP device as our API gateway, great, F5 is console aware. We can configure it to say, great, C and D are my you know, upstream services in this case. I'm not gonna provide a static set of IPs. Go and integrate query console and now if I scale up D, I don't need to file a ticket to manually update the API gateway. It automatically gets it by virtue of just querying console, right? And treating it as the sort of service discovery service registry, right? Similarly, maybe if I'm using a you know, modern load balancer, maybe I'm using Nginx as an example, it can also query console and do the same sort of a thing, right? And so this makes sense if I have these kind of more modern appliances, they might be console aware, they can do this sort of more dynamic discovery. What if I don't have that, right? Maybe I have a more traditional firewall that's not console aware, it can't integrate with it. And so this is where we have a use case that we refer to as network infrastructure automation, right? So with network infrastructure automation, the idea is I still don't want to be in the business of managing low level IPs. I don't wanna manage a set of IPs that say, you know, what are the set of IPs that belong to A and how do I manually keep those up to date to talk to the database, which itself might have a dynamic set of IPs. Instead, what we wanna do is focus on a high level set of rules, right? I wanna really say service A is allowed to talk to my database. And I don't really care what the IPs of A are and I don't really care what the IPs of the database are. They're gonna scale up and down, things might move around, et cetera. I wanna be reactive to that. And so in this use case, what we do is we actually leverage Terraform. So what we do is we author a snippet of Terraform configuration, right? So this is Terraform, it's infrastructure as code. And what we have is as our input, it's the set of 
service A, so our input is service A, as well as the set of database nodes, right? And then we're going to configure as part of our Terraform, you know, what are the rules, for example, to configure our Palo Alto firewall, right? And so then the way this works is it's a sort of a publisher-subscriber relationship. When these services, a new instance A comes up, it's registering with console, it's sort of publishing the fact that there's a new instance of A. Now, this Terraform snippet, we configure this using what we call the console Terraform sync agent. It's gonna now look and say, great, I'm subscribed to the changes in service A or to service database. And so the moment this gets published that there's a new instance of A, it triggers this subscription, right? So there's a subscription that gets triggered. So we say, great, before you only had this one instance of A, now there's a second IP. Those get fed as inputs to this Terraform configuration, which then gets executed and automatically updates the Palo Alto device. And so what this does is it creates a sort of clean separation for us, right? As an application developer, our contract is we deploy our application, that application publishes and registers to console and says, great, I'm a new instance of A or I'm a new instance of D. And then we can drive the downstream subscription, right? That subscription might be to an API gateway that's console aware, so it automatically can add D as a backend, but it might be driving a subscription through our Terraform agent. And what that allows us to do is define using Terraform and the existing resources, how we want that to be reflected to let's say our firewall, could be our load balancer, could be an API gateway. And so when we announced this network infrastructure play, we did it in partnership with the biggest, most common networking providers. So you can get a full list on our website, but it includes everyone like Cisco, Juniper, A10, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, you know, et cetera, the list goes on, right? And so the idea is you can still bring along your network and automate it as part of sort of this broader infrastructure using the sort of publisher subscriber mechanism with console acting as that sort of central broker, right? So that gives you as sort of the full discovery and visibility. So great, works natively with sort of modern apps that can query console, modern you know, networking solutions that are integrated. And then we can apply this network infrastructure automation approach using Terraform to then automate against all of the other things that we have. As long as they have an API and have a Terraform provider, we can fit it into this model. And so this really starts to give us a story around how do we automate our infrastructure end to end where our application deployment might be automated, but now this includes the networking updates as part of that. So we don't have to file a ticket and then wait for someone to manually update a firewall or manually update a load balancer. We're really flowing that automation end to end through the system. Hopefully this gives a sense of how console fits in and how it can be integrated with Terraform as part of our network infrastructure automation. Thanks.